Thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Vulcan Report. This end of day report is brought to you on Friday, July the 29th, 2016. As you can see, this is a chart of the Dow Jones futures contract. And you can see the market did finish in an oversold situation. And it looks to be trying to lock in on this corrective mode. The problem is that even though it's in a negative pulse wave and it's been that way all week, it's relatively flat. Not a lot of um, noise here, not a lot of conviction, not a lot of downward momentum. And all we're doing is testing this trend line right here, the first level of support, which is right here at the 18264 uh, level. The next support is at 17. Um, 966 which is this orange trend line right here so not a lot to talk about not a lot to write home about momentum's come off but it's not necessarily um, bearish per se only because of the nature of the chart looking at the just pure technical aspect of it the market is in a negative um, pulse wave so I would expect sideways to lower prices within the next three to five days to continue um, overhead resistance right now is at 18,539 so a break above that would put an end to this downtrend and start a, a new positive up wave which could bring the Dow to 19,000 yes I said it it would bring the Dow to 19,000 I know read it and weep looking at the longer term situation as you can see for the week we really haven't done much uh, when you take a look at it uh, here, here we are right here this is the week and you can see it's coming off but nothing really solid and on the weekly chart we haven't even touched uh, the blue trend line of 18,185 so with that being said the market really hasn't done anything all it did was come off of an overbought uh, situation and that's pretty much it so it shook off some of the overbought markets well supported at 17,202 in the Dow so it could it, it could sustain a thousand point drop and still be bullish no technical damage done on the chart it's in a bullish upward pulse wave right now tracking along the trend line so technically speaking on the longer term chart the market is bullish and again when you look at it from the longer term chart there's nothing to sell here on the chart now once I run the algorithms this weekend then we'll see if there's anything nefarious going on in the put option ratios and things of that nature see if there's anything uh, weird in the market depth and take a look at some of the other little tricks I use with the bid asks and things of that nature so we'll see if we get a rally alert or a crash alert uh, for Sunday night Monday We'll see. I don't know yet. I'm just telling you what I'm looking at here on the chart right now, and that's all we got to go on for right now, and that's fine enough. Taking a look at the uh, S&P 500, it, it 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 went out on the highs on the long-term chart here. It looks looks great. Um, let me just pause real quick. There have been a lot of, you know, questions. Uh, I, I get I get different questions, and I, I'm so busy lately. It's very difficult to. Um, keep track of all these so I'm gonna pause right here and, and answer a few questions um, that I get in these videos so here, here it goes okay as you know this is uh, the thinkorswim trading platform I love it I think it's the you know the best out there um, as far as time frames I use the weekly chart alright the weekly chart is my chart I look at that and base my decisions off of that all right, so the weekly chart is what I'm using. That's the time frame I am using. The um, the pulse wave uh, price projections that you see on the website are for the week. So it's based off the weekly chart. Those are weekly pulse wave price projections. Okay, so time period out the way, it's weekly. Uh, for those of you who are, don't use this platform, uh, a, few, a few tricks here. See this right here? Where the arrow is right here see that WK that's weekly when I change the time frames the D means daily and the 4H means the four hour intraday chart 
those are the three time frames that I use for these videos. I use weekly, daily, and the four hour intraday charts. Okay, so, and if you're ever in doubt what time frame I'm using, just look right here. Just take a look right here, and you'll see it. Okay, um, and then of course, the, the symbol for what I'm talking about is in the upper left hand of the screen right here. So, this uh, ES is the E mini S and P500 futures contract. Okay. Um, as far as everything else on the chart, okay, these here are long term and intermediate and short term trend lines. This one right here is the blue one is your short term, the purple line is your intermediate, and the orange line is your long term uh, chart, you know, trend line. Okay, so that's what I'm using here. Um, standard uh, trend lines that um, that are used is the 18 period for your short term, the 50 period for your intermediate term, and the 200 period for your um, your long term. Okay, that's pretty much standard in the industry. Okay, and for our purposes and you know in the videos, it works perfectly for me. Okay, so that's what I am using for these um, for, for these videos of course this right here this this is the Kumo cloud all right this is the the, the Ikimoko uh, charting tool that was created by some Japanese business dude like 50 60 70 years ago uh, come standard in most trading platforms I do not use it like other people use it just so you know that I do not I do not use uh, traditional technical indicators like most people use. I use my own proprietary indicators, my own proprietary trend lines, moving averages, whatever you want to call them, and everything else. So my stuff is not necessarily going to look like yours. Um, for the purposes of these videos, though, I'm using you know standard stuff that comes in this um, Thinkorswim platform. Thinkorswim allows you through their think script to uh, do your own coding and program your own indicators and charts and stuff okay so just so you know that everything I use is proprietary so I don't use standard indicators because um, technical indicators uh, they don't really work anything that comes standard um, in a trading chart package they, they don't work all right, everyone's using them and whatever. I, I I don't I don't believe in them because I I've been trading for for so long. I know what works and what doesn't. I've used just about every technical indicator you can think of. There are new ones that come out every month, every day, every week. Someone's making makes them. There there are tens of thousands of them. Uh, I've seen just about every system you can think of, and I've. I've taken everything that I know and I've put it to work and I know what works and what, and what doesn't and I use things in a totally different way most people would think I'm weird and a nut for how I use stuff and what I do but I know what works and so that's it alright moving on I've labored that too much getting back to the chart here the S&P 500 uh, is well supported uh, at uh, 2013 and 3 quarters so uh, you can see this this market has locked itself into a bullish trend, and right now there's no end in sight. Okay, so with that said, I don't know the really finer technical aspects of this market. When I do these videos, if uh, you know these end of day videos, especially for you know the last day of the week, uh, if I do the video on Friday, I haven't run the updates yet. I haven't taken all, gathered all the data for the week and run it through the system. So I'm just doing an end of day video just based on the chart alone. All right. As far as what I think, um, I don't have an opinion until I run, you know, everything through my system. My system is my opinion. Um, so until I crunch the data, I can't tell you if there's a crash alert or a rally alert. I know that's, you know, that's really a unique bread and butter aspect of the system is that it gives you uh, rally alerts and crash alerts in the markets I do not have the update when I do the end of day videos it's just an end of day video to see 
you know how the price action did and that's what the chart is for uh, for the technical stuff uh, I leave that after I do the updates and you know whatever so that's that's what that's for if there's anything special of course that's going to be put in the trading room um, you know that's based on subscription and as far as anything other than that like updates on the charts I put those on the website so that's what that's about all right moving on let's uh, take a look now at the uh, at the uh, the equities all right this right here is the SPY this is the equity counterpart of the futures as you can say it, it finished up green as well hitting a new high of 217.54 well supported at 201.83 so there's been no pullback yet one two three four this is the fifth week in a row of cl uh, closing up closing green so no pullback in sight right now in these markets I'm sure one is coming you didn't get a lot of action this week but it's still closed up up is up so there you have it uh, nothing to sell here I know that's painful for those who have been uber bearish in the market even though we have our opinions even though we understand all the fundamental analysis news out there we still have to trade the price action the price action is going up so we have to trade up with it until it doesn't markets will go up until they don't when markets are bearish they go down until they don't so you have to wait for the market to tell you what to do and when to do it and right now it's telling you to go long all right, taking a look now at the NASDAQ uh, 100 futures, as you can see, powerful surge here, closing at 47.30. This market is really on fire. It's locked in on a bullish uh, mode here, well supported, even below the Kumo cloud at 42.20. So this market can come down and test the trend line, even close below it, you know, and still be bullish you can fall approximately 200 points from the long-term trend line and still be bullish still have upward thrust and momentum that's fantastic that's spectacular look at this so trend line separating heading up now this thing is is crazy it's very strong one two three four five weeks in a row and all closing bullish with the exception of this one it's, it was it closed up but not as strong as the other weeks that's powerful what can you say all right now looking at the qqq same story what can you say markets well supported at 10303 which will put you right here into the kumo cloud and it's still bullish powerful nasdaq powerful tech sector right now all right what did i tell you about the u.s dollar uh, as you can see the, the selling extended uh, Friday and here we are getting closer to that uh, major support at 94.69 a close below that would put an end to the current bullish channel and now create the beginning of a bearish one that could test and take out this low here of 93.83 markets getting close to the oversold area so that's something to watch going into next week and right now you see the market technically still is in a, a positive pulse wave situation but it's the chart is not as strong as it could be at the end of the day I do not see them like I said allowing this dollar to straight up crash and burn so it's gonna be defended at some point right now though it is it is in a corrective phase and it's getting close to oversold so it's going to definitely be one to watch uh, going into uh, next week all right taking a look at the equity counterpart UUP as you can see this market uh, is well supported at 2424 so it still has a, a more ways to go it did not do as much damage as the uh, futures did and it's getting near the support as well massive volume here that's strong volume so we could see some continued selling going in the next week uh, not quite oversold yet it could bounce like it did here and waffle around a, a bit okay it could it could do that but I don't know it's you know this is this is a pretty strong extension 
we could see something like this more than likely. A reversal by the end of next week like this and then, you know, a retest like here and go. We could see something like that. I mean, the, the channel is, is really weird. This is not a nice, smooth channel. It's, it's whack, if you ask me. And that's only because of the Brexit stuff back up in here. But even still, um, it could be a lot better than what it is. So this is probably going to be a wide range bound market for the rest of the year. I suspect this support will probably hold. Then we'll get back up here toward the bottom of the Kuma cloud, fall back down again, and just go like this for the rest of the week, more than likely. I think we're going to stay up here, um, you know, between, you know, 24 and 25, a, a dollar range, basically, uh, is what I see here on the equity side of things. All right, looking at the crude oil, as you can see, crude oil hit um, a low this week of 40 57 which is amazing um it's oversold and it's trying to lock in just like i told you it would as you can see right here one more week of this and we would the only thing that is in the defense of this uh crude oil is that it's in the kumo cloud now kumo clouds can either have massive breakdowns continuations or consolidations with sharp reversals out of the cloud so that's why i say it's the kumo cloud of death because it could do anything and it could you know burn you quickly so it's it is what it is it's one of those things where you know you don't know what it's going to do until it's done it so you may want to stay out until it finds a direction market has strong resistance at fifty dollars and nine cents right here and right now it's um this is one of those markets you know it's in a negative pulse wave it's it's negative um, it's like I said, you know, this is being sold up in here, just like before, it's being sold, and now we're coming back down again. Barring some major event, I don't see it breaking out past this 50, not right now. So that's just something to think about. It could consolidate all the way out here, it could extend uh, the way this market's been, been doing. It's been known to extend, see this extension here. So we're just extending again. We really haven't broken out of the sideways channel range overall we still got some more downside to go before you even get out of the cloud if it gets out it may just like kind of a wick extension out of here like a spike doesn't have to be that big of one it could just be a little one it could be a, you know something like this but to the downside like this one sticking out of the cloud and then reverse back up again so it'll be an interesting one interesting one to see going into next week all right, and here's the counterpart OIH going on the equity side of things. Same scenario, not as much uh, selling pressure to extend the bar. It's just hanging out in that Kumo cloud, oversold, not really locking anything in yet. This one may take about two weeks, so we'll see what happens with the OIH, but it has overhead resistance at $30.95, and that seems to be pretty strong. Uh, so we'll have to watch this one too. This will be interesting to see what oil does in the coming weeks. All right, now looking at bonds, uh, the TMF is well supported at 10107, and it finished the week strong as well. A uh, nice turn of a turn up here in the momentum side of things. This one's probably, like I said, going to make a run and test this uh, 126. Probably take it out, at least hit that or tap that 130. So that would be my my target going forward for this one been that we've already filled the gap here like I told you before no more gaps really to deal with this market's ready to run uh, to the upside here all right and we'll finish the video now looking at the VIX we'll, we'll do T VIX let's deal with the big elephant in the room first I think people misunderstood the video I made yesterday I wasn't making fun of the bearish position I was actually giving you a hint saying hint hint how can you ignore a market that's a dollar? It's a dollar right now to buy a TVIX. You would be a fool not to fill your shopping your shopping cart up with some TVIX right now. Three hundred and four million eight hundred and four thousand four hundred and sixty shares traded hands this week. Um, even if this market retests, I think the all all time low is forty six cents. I mean, come on, that's not big from here. This this uh, this equity isn't going anywhere. You know, as soon as something happens in the equity market, whenever it does, I don't care what the event is, this thing is going to skyrocket up. 
and I know I did a video on this uh, some time ago warning what's going to happen when the market does have a correction. I still, I, it's still not going to go anywhere overall, but this will. This At one point, this thing was trading historically at two, dollars $3,000 a share. If you buy it for a buck now and we get something like another Brexit, what do you think this this has the potential to do? This has the potential to go from a dollar to 20, 30, 40, 50, 80 dollars. Uh, you'll be shocked at what this market can do. And you would kick yourself in the face for not being smart enough to buy some some protection right now. This right here is a once in a lifetime situation to buy protection when the market when the stock market's hitting all time highs. What do you got to lose? Even with a hundred shares only a hundred bucks. A thousand shares only a thousand bucks. Come on, man. That's come on. You know, and it's not an option, so it's not going to expire. You can just hold it. At least you know it's there. It's almost like an insurance policy. Um, I, that's all I was really pointing out. All right, I was doing it in a tongue-in-cheek way, a little corny humor, and I think you guys misunderstood me. But again, how can you not entertain the TVX at this point? And if you don't like that one, okay. How about the how about the the VIX? How about the VXX? Come on, it's ten dollars. All right. It's 10 bucks. Again, don't be one of those people that kick yourself for not seeing the trade of a lifetime. When the Brexit thing came and I warned everybody, I said the trade of the trade of a lifetime opportunity is coming up. Position yourself and do what you need to do. Some people took it to heart, some people didn't, and you missed an opportunity that may not happen again. That's all I'm saying. So remember, bulls make money, bears make money, and pigs get slaughtered. So remember, Take what you can, give nothing back. Everybody have a wonderful weekend, and please uh, like and subscribe and to the videos and tell a friend, pass it on, you know, be a good neighbor. Peace.